Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Gorowski, and I will be your host for today. If you've been following along this month, you know that we've been focusing on biodiversity as well as endangered species. So we've been talking to scientists and explorers from all over the world who've dedicated their lives to uh, not only protecting these species, but also protecting uh, the habitats that they do need to survive. So before we uh, get started and meet our guest Stephanie today, I want to give a quick shout out to any classrooms who are starting to tune in uh, live via YouTube. Don't forget, you can get in on the action. There's a chat sidebar on the right. Let us know where you're viewing from. Uh, send in a question or two, and we'll, we'll do our best to work them into the Hangout today. And of course, to any classroom who's tuning in, whether you're on camera or watching on YouTube, take some pictures, post them on Twitter. We'd love to see classrooms in action. Uh, you can also hashtag Exploring by the Seat and uh, tag uh, Exploring by the Seat Your Pants as well, and we'll share those pictures too. All right. Well, let's get down to business. We are uh, <laughs> hanging out today with uh, Stephanie Javikowskis. She is a public outreach and education officer uh, with Parks Canada, uh, education officer for short. Uh, <laughs> so Banff National Park is home to 13 populations of the threatened West Slope cutthroat trout, and these are a fish species at risk. So Parks Canada is working to restore them. Uh, these cutthroat trout populations and we are so lucky to have stephanie joining us today who can tell us about the the project and uh just what it is that they're up to so stephanie thank you so much for hanging out with us today i heard you tell us it is a beautiful uh sunny day where you are unfortunately we've got some clouds and rain in the forecast so hopefully you can send a little bit of that our way today <laughs> i'm trying i'm sending you some good energy some good sunny energy <laughs> okay um well right now i'm in a basement so i can't see the sun but uh i'm very excited to be here and sharing some stories about west Slope cutthroat trout with all of you folks um i am incredibly fortunate to not only uh uh, work for Parks Canada, but I actually get to work and live in a national park called Banff National Park. Uh, and my role here is to support some of the incredible conservation work that the park is doing and share the stories of these um, actions with folks like yourself. So I want to thank you so very much for joining me today to learn about an amazing fish species that uh, Joe has already mentioned called the West Slope Cutthroat Trout. We're gonna look at what, uh, why this is such an important species, some of the challenges the West Slope Cutthroat Trout is experiencing and what Parks Canada is doing to help them in Banff National Park. And, uh, and if we have time at the end, I'd love to hear some questions. Okay, so Joe, what do, uh, do we uh, move over to the slideshow now? Let's do it. Let's jump into the screen share. Okay. And so entire, okay, Windows application. Okay, share. Bear with me here. I'm not necessarily the most technically savvy. Looks good so right. far. Let's go full screen. Okay, let's proceed to the next level. Okay, now have any of you heard of Banff National Park? I'm sure you have, I'm sure the Calgary folks have. Um, Banff uh, National Park is Canada's first national park and it was established in 1884. I just want to pause me for just a second. It didn't go yeah. full screen. Oh, it's not, hey? No. So can you see it at all? I can see, um, I think your view, like the presenter view. Oh. Okay. Is it full screen um, on your screen? Okay. So can you see it now? How does it look for you right now? Is it full screen? No, uh, still the presenter view. I'm wondering if you click the slideshow at the top, if there's another option for us to go full screen. Because um, I'm guessing you can see the, the presenter screen on your side. No, I'm seeing full screen on my side. Okay, so we've just got to make it switch for us. There should be an option um, to switch from uh, presenter view to full screen view. Um, in the PowerPoint program? Yeah, or... usually right in the PowerPoint program. Well, I did that. So I actually had it full screen in the PowerPoint program. 
Like that's full screen for me, but you're not seeing that, hey? No. Try and hit um, escape for us. So it goes back to kind of the smaller view for you. Yeah. So that's yeah. the smaller view for me. Perfect. And then click that slideshow option up at the top and see if that gives us um, some options. Yeah. Now, I wonder if my my desktop is set for two monitors. I think so, in which case, I wonder if the other option we could go with too, mm -hmm. um, if we can't see the option to switch, is just to enlarge kind of the view that we're seeing right now. And we can kind of run through the slides in the presenter mode, but with a bigger view of the slides. OK. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. How's that looking? Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah. And then I'll. Um... Perfect. Is that looking good for you guys? That'll work. If that's the if that's what'll work today, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So um, now Banff National Park is in the Canadian Rockies in the province of Alberta, just west of the city of Calgary. It's home to some pretty amazing plant and animal species like grizzly bears, cougars, wolverines, and of course, the West Slope cutthroat trout. Now, Banff has some pretty uh, uh, rugged mountain terrain, as you can see in this image. And the climate, uh, just like the landscape, can also be pretty extreme. It has really long winters with uh, cool, short summers. So, why might this information be important for West Slope cutthroat trout? Well, um, West Slope cutthroat trout are in an ancient species that have evolved over millions of years in North America. Hey, Stephanie. Yes. I think I've just been looking at your screen and I think I can solve our problem. Oh, okay. If you look at the top, it says use presenter view. Try clicking so that arrow goes away and then go full screen again and see if we can get full screen. Okay, now you see so, the little arrow. It says monitor, and then at the bottom, it said right underneath it says use projector view or presenter view. Um, can you see that? Um, I, yeah. If oh. you move, if you move the arrow up, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it says use. Yeah, over to the right a little bit. There, a little. Yeah, use. Try clicking that. Now try going full screen and see if we get full screen. Try hitting play. How's it looking? Any different? Did you hit the play slide option? Yeah. And is it full screen for you? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, that was a bit anticlimactic. It was worth a try. I thought that would have taken <laughs> care of it for us, but we'll have to just do it the way we were doing it. Okay, we'll just keep going. All, All right. right. Um, so, um, Wessel cutthroat trout are an ancient species, like I said, evolved over millions of years um, in North America. Now, at one point in the Earth's history, a huge part of North America was covered by a very thick layer of ice for thousands of years, and that was known as the Ice Age. Now, when these huge sheets of ice and glaciers started retreating, West Slope cutthroat trout were one of the first species to recolonize or come back uh, to Alberta. Now, the fact that these hardy fish arrived here as the glaciers were retreating prepared them well for living in the mountain lakes and streams of Banff National Park. Now, today, this fish needs clean water to survive just like you and I, and they also need this water to be cold. Now, because of these special habitat needs, this means that they're really in, a really good indicator of a healthy ecosystem. Now, as you can see in this short video clip, oh, is it working? There we go. They prefer these kind of gravel areas that haven't been covered too much in silt or mud. And these gravel areas are really important for them for when they're laying their eggs. Now today, West Slope cutthroat trout are actually missing from over 90% of their native range. And because of this, I, and I think Joe mentioned this earlier, 
They're now listed as a threatened species in Canada under the Species at Risk Act. So this means that we are actually legally required to protect them. So why are West Slope Cup? <laughs> Sorry, so why are West Slope cutthroat trout having such a hard time? Well, there are a few challenges for them, and one of the biggest problems they're having is with non-native species. Now, West Slope cutthroat trout are known as a native species, which means they occur naturally and have developed and existed for many years in an area, and in this case, Banff National Park. Now, a non-native species is one that's been introduced to an area. So it's a species that's not natural to an ecosystem. They haven't developed or evolved over time with the native species that live there. They're kind of a bit like an alien. Hey, Stephanie, I, sorry, I need to jump in one more time. Yeah. Um, Technology is just messing with us today. Like oh, it can no. be time. Um, have slides changed? We haven't yes. seen change from the the slide from 10,000 to 7,000 years ago. <laughs> oh no, I uh, I was just showing you a video. Um, I'm so sorry. Well, okay. Let, okay, can you see, does it look different now? Yeah, I can see the trout at the okay. bottom now. Well, here, just cause we missed the little trout video. Those are the gravel, that's the gravel bed I was trying to describe. Isn't that a beautiful looking fish, hey? The water is a nice, beautiful blue as well. Absolutely. So those that's a uh, just exceptional uh, West Slope cutthroat trout habitat. And um, now, what am I trying to do here? All right. Okay. So uh, we talked a bit about um, how they're threatened. We talked about how they're a native species. Now, can you see all of the the slides changing now? Yeah, they're they're transitioning for us now. Okay. Now, um, so unfortunately, you're not going to see some of the dynamic elements of the of the slides, but that's that's okay. So, getting back to the difference between a native and non-native species. So, a non-native species, like I said, is a bit like an alien that's brand new to a planet, except that a non-native species, uh, in our case, didn't arrive by a spaceship, okay? Um, they either came by accident, perhaps it was something, creature that was attached to a boat, or maybe they were brought on purpose. Um, now, non-native species can compete with the native species, like West Slope cutthroat trout, for resources, like food. Uh, they also might not have natural predators, which means other animals that can eat them, and they may not be as vulnerable to diseases. So um, West Slope cutthroat trout right now are having a hard time because of this non-native species called a rainbow trout. Now, rainbow trout actually are found naturally in parts of northern Alberta, but they in fact are not native to parts of southern Alberta, including Banff National Park. So the challenge with rainbow trout is that they can mix or reproduce with the West Slope cutthroat trout and create something called a hybrid. Now these hybrids are a mix of fish that are actually no longer considered a West Slope cutthroat trout. And this means that over time, as the fish continue to reproduce, the West Slope cutthroat trout will eventually completely disappear from the landscape. So you might ask, how did this rainbow trout uh, come to exist in Banff National Park? Very good question. Well, we have to remember that the park's been around for quite a while and over time, uh, our understanding of wilderness has grown and changed. When the park was first established, there were very few people that lived in cities and there was a lot more wilderness than there is today. We wanted to make the national parks at the time and today uh, very special for people to experience. And at that time, we thought that having species like rainbow trout in the rivers and lakes of the park would create a better fishing experience. And in order to do that, we needed to introduce what were considered superior sport fish like rainbow trout. Okay, 
Now, we just so you know, we uh, actually stopped introducing uh, rainbow trout in the park um, almost 40 years ago. Okay, so you might ask now, why is it so important to have West Slope cutthroat trout in the park? Well, can you imagine oceans without orcas? Or for the folks in Calgary, can you imagine the mountains without grizzly bears? And if you're Ontario, if you're in Ontario, Ontario without trilliums, Texas without pronghorns, or if you're in your, you're in New Jersey, um, uh, a, a state without foxes or sturgeon. Um, the habitat, the places that we live in, the ecosystems are not complete without them. Conserving species in their natural habitat is really important for Parks Canada. Um, national parks are places where people expect to see and experience intact, pristine wilderness, which in our case in Banff includes species like West Slope cutthroat trout. Now, Joe, I just want to check in and make sure that the slides are, are working. Um, are you actually seeing the little West Slope cutthroat trout in the hands of one of our uh, incredible park staff? Yep, they're transitioning nicely for us now. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so what's Parks Canada doing to actually help them? Well, back in uh, uh, 20... Well, oh, back in 2012, Parks Canada, along with the province of Alberta and different uh, uh, departments uh, with the uh, government of Canada, came together to create a plan for how we're going to work together to, to, to protect them. And the, the main goal of, uh, of, of that we have is to not only protect the current populations of West Slope cutthroat trout, uh, but to create more of these populations um, and in, in places where they were historically found. Okay, so as part of the plan, we looked at an area of Banff that had some of these pure populations of West Slope cutthroat trout that were threatened by rainbow trout. So on this screen here, you've got this map, and in the lower left-hand corner, you kind of see a little blue blob. Well, that's called Sawback Lake. And Sawback Lake has this one of these populations of pure West Slope cutthroat trout. Now, however, you can see, uh, I don't know if you guys can see, there's there's some uh, oh. some green circles. Oh, can, sorry, Joe. Is that everything okay? Yep, looks good. Okay, so there's some little circles with fish in them. So these are Sawback Creek, Rainbow Creek, Rain and Rainbow Lake which are all connected to Sawback Lake, but they have rainbow trout in them, as well as hybrid or those mixed trout I was telling you about. So the first step we took to help the, the, the uh, West Slope cutthroat trout was to remove the non-native trout from these places. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, some of the ways that we did this uh, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see some uh, some of our park staff in a boat, and what they're doing there is they're actually using nets, almost 27 of them, in Rainbow Lake to capture the rainbow trout. Now, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see the park staff with these long yellow poles, and in some of the harder-to-reach areas, those poles are actually... Um, something called uh, electrofishers. So they're actually kind of giving the fish a bit of a zap um, and shocking them. And then they capture the fish with the little nets that they have. So those are the, the, the white um, things that you see they're, they're holding. Now, what they would do is they would actually take the fish and completely take them out of the water and remove them all together. Now, the person on the right hand side is doing something very special. Remember I was talking about the hybrids. Well, some of the fish were really hard to tell whether they were a rainbow trout or uh, a West Slope cutthroat trout. So we actually had to do genetic testing. And so that's what that person is doing. Okay, so after we made sure that there were no rainbow trout in, um, in, in, in those creeks, and Rainbow Lake. The second part of the project was to capture some of the pure West Slope cutthroat trout from nearby Sawback Lake and then put them into Rainbow Lake. 
and that's to help build the population of West Slope cutthroat trout into the future. Okay, so how did we do this? Um, well, very carefully, of course. Uh, Parks Canada staff, as you can see in this photograph, set up a little camp uh, by Sawback Lake for a few days. And with the help of Trout Unlimited volunteers, we were able to catch 100 West Slope cutthroat trout. Now, as you can see in this image, each fish was actually caught individually by a volunteer. So in, in this image, one of our volunteers, she's caught um, a fish. And on the left-hand side is one of our park staff who's quickly scooping up the fish and very carefully removing it from the hook. Now, once that person, once that park staff has the fish, the fish were then moved into these little baskets in the water. And uh, why would we want to put the baskets in or put the fish in these baskets as opposed to that yellow bucket? Well, this means that the fish are in the water that they're accustomed to. There's food and there's oxygen. So, and the temperature is the same. So it's not a stress for them to, to, to be in these uh, uh, holding pens. Now from the pens, the fish were then moved to these very large buckets to be transferred over to Rainbow Lake. But you might wanna ask, what is this very large bucket connected to? Now, do any of you believe that flying fish exist in Banff National Park? Well, for one day they did. Um, we actually used helicopters to move them very quickly from Sawback Lake and then bring them to Rainbow Lake where they were released. So you can see, I don't, I'm not sure how well you can see it in this image, um, but there's a little fish being released at the bottom of the black part of the bucket. Now I'm just gonna show you a quick video for how this process worked of actually moving the fish around. Okay, so. This is the grand finale of, of four years of really hard work. Is this working, Joe? And they should be really proud of this accomplishment. Yeah, it's playing for us. First significant recovery effort for West Slope cutthroat trout. This is the first effort at establishing a new population. And the genetic material that moves out of Rainbow Lake and heads down into the upper Cascade River is going to help ensure. Oh, sorry, my bad. This is the grand finale of, of four years of really hard work by our aquatics team, and they should be really proud of this accomplishment. This is the first significant recovery effort for West Slope cutthroat trout. This is the first effort at establishing a new population. And the genetic material that moves out of Rainbow Lake and heads down into the upper Cascade River is going to help ensure pure West Slope cutthroat trout in the upper Cascade for generations. That was the moment because we're told, okay, they're going to put the fish into the Bambi bucket. Okay, well, is that going to work? So we all stood back and watched and the park staff very efficiently, very professionally, quickly put the fish in the, in the bucket and off they flew. And it was so magic to just see our fish being flown into the sky. And we're like, oh my God. For me, that was definitely the moment. And hearing afterwards that the landing and the, and the fish uh, being put into the Rainbow Lake, that went really well and they survived. With the help of volunteers from Trout Unlimited, 100 pure strain West Slope cutthroat trout have been relocated to the headwaters of Rainbow Lake, high up in the Canadian Rockies. This lake is teeming with invertebrates, and we are sure that the population of native trout will not only survive, but will flourish. Yay! 
So, um, how do you think the fish are doing? Well, <laughs> um, from what we can tell, they're doing really well. Based on observations that were taken last summer at the lake, it looks like not only have the fish that we put in Rainbow Lake survived, but there are different ages, um, there are different sizes, which means that the fish that we put in Rainbow Lake uh, have laid eggs, and those eggs have hatched, and they've survived, and they're also laying eggs and, and surviving. So we're super excited about this. But our work doesn't finish uh, right now. Um, with the help of Transalta, we're actually restoring a creek in the park so that one day it too can have West Slope cutthroat trout live in it once again. So this is called the Cascade Creek Restoration Project. And um, for those of you that uh, live in the Calgary area, this is a place that you can actually visit um, if you come to the park. So are West Slope cutthroat trout uh, worth restoring? Well, uh, in Banff National Park, they're a native species, a symbol of healthy aquatic ecosystems that, know you, that need cold, clean water to survive, just like you and me. They've been here for a very long time and Parks Canada is working really hard to keep them here for years to come. And perhaps if you come to Banff National Park one day, you might be able to see them in a mountain lake or stream like Cascade Creek. Um, and with that note, I want to thank you so very much for spending time with me this morning to learn about this incredible species. And Joe, I think if we have a little bit of time, um, we can answer some questions. Oh, we definitely have time for some questions. Okay. Um, if you want to come back to us, there should be a stop screen share option at the bottom. Okay. Uh, and if there's not, you can go back to the Google Hangout window uh, and hit the green button again, and that'll end the screen share as well. Okay. And... Um, Oh, I see. Oh, we got gotcha. you. You're back. <laughs> All right. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, I know the screen share didn't cooperate 100% with us today, but uh, that's technology for you sometimes. But we pushed through and, <laughs> and we're able to see the presentation. So uh, we'll chalk that up as a victory for us today. <laughs> All right. Well, let's meet some classrooms. But I just want to say again, I'm, you know, it's so important. We see, we, we see so many stories about how we're losing species. Uh, mm -hmm. They're important, um, but it is good to see some of the stories that give hope where um, conservation projects like the one in Banff National Park are successful um, mm -hmm. and to see the conservationists who work so hard to try to protect uh, the species whenever and wherever they can. So that's pretty cool. Yay. All right. Well, let's start meeting some of our classrooms because I have okay. no doubt they have some questions. So anything's fair game, boys and girls, about the park, about uh, the conservation program, the trout, it's all fair game. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's start off in Tweed, Ontario. Let's go to Mrs. Cassidy's class. Um, let me track down uh, their microphone. There it is. Should be on now. How are we doing, boys and girls in Tweed? Oh, it looks like they may have had to have stepped out. So let's... Uh, <laughs> A little anticlimactic, so let's try another classroom. Let's go to Mrs. Gill's classroom. We're hanging out with us in Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, five sixes. Let's get that microphone turned on. Yay. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good! All right, Cambridge. What are some of the tools you use in your job? Oh, the uh, oh, in, in my job? Now, are you uh, interested in terms of the work that I, you, uh, that I do as a teacher or the work that we do as parks uh, when we're out in the field? Out in the field. That's what I was thinking. That's way more interesting. 
<laughs> well, in the case of, um, well, we use a lot of different tools. Now, in the case of the, um, uh, in the case of the, the West Slope cutthroat trout, we had to use a whole, we had to use boats. Um, and you saw that we used helicopters to actually fly the fish. Um, we also had to use little, little, very tiny tags to insert them into the fish um, to help keep track of uh, the fish and whether or not they were um, uh, where they were traveling in the river system. So sometimes we, uh, 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 for another fish that we were studying, the bull trout, we actually had to use little tiny tags inside them and they had radio uh, telemetry. So we use a lot of different um, uh, tools. We Sometimes we use cameras to see where uh, animals are going in the park. Um, and sometimes we look at, um, we have to look at the tracks that they make. Um, but those are for animals that don't live in the water necessarily. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Good one. That's a very good question. All right. Perfect. Well, let's go to a classroom who's not too far from you today. Uh, Calgary, Alberta. We have some grade fives hanging out with Mrs. Uh, Mercier. Let me get that microphone turned on. Oh. Awesome! Hey! How are we doing, grade fives? Hi. <laughs> Great to see you. You know what? I'm ha I had a really hard time hearing that. Um, so I don't know if there's a problem with the um, with the microphone or the sound on my end. Um, can you repeat the question? Um, well, I think I heard that asking about volunteers with Trout Unlimited. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so sorry. They're, they're wondering what Trout Unlimited is. I think you might have mentioned. Oh, okay. Um, so Trout Unlimited. Um, some of you may have heard of organizations like Ducks unlimited um, it's a volunteer organization that is uh, super interested in helping uh, fish species survive and so they're uh, people who like to fish and they want to make sure that fish are healthy and um, and that if people are going to fish that they're doing it responsibly so they also help people understand how to do it and do it well. Yeah, great question. Awesome, thank you. All right, good question. Uh, Mrs. Romanowski's class, grade four is hanging out in Freehold, New Jersey. Let me get their microphone turned on. How are we doing, grade fours? Good. Hello, New Jersey. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. My question is, how do the cutthroat trout help our world? In other words, what makes you so dedicated to save them from extinction? <gasps> oh, that's a good one. Well, so West Slope cutthroat trout, because they're, they require that cold water and that clean water. And remember, we also need clean water, right? So if West Slope cutthroat trout are having a hard time because the water's not clean, that's a pretty indicator. Uh, that's a, if, if they're not surviving, then there's something wrong. So it tells us that there's something wrong with the water um, or there's something wrong with the ecosystem. Now, because they're sensitive as well, not just to the clean water, but the cold water, if the temperature of the water is getting warmer, they have a harder time surviving in those conditions. So that helps us know, oh, okay, if they're having a hard time because of the water temperature, that means that we need to be doing something different to make sure that the water is in good condition. Does that kind of help? Does that answer that? Good one. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Schaefer's class, if you don't mind turning on your microphone for me, uh, Mr. Schaefer's class is hanging out with us in San Antonio, some more fourth graders. Uh, once we get that on, give us a big shout out and then we'll take a question. What? Are we on? We got gotcha. you. How are we doing, San Antonio? Christian, you want to come? Uh, hello, San Antonio. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> 
What's the biggest fish you ever found? Oh, okay. Well, big trout. Yeah, big there's trout. okay. That and you know what? I love that question, and that depends. Uh, here, because we live in mountains, it depends on what elevation you're at. And it depends on how much food there might be available to the fish in the lake. Now, um, in Sawback Lake, the place that we were talking about, the fish are about, uh, oh, they're about 14 inches, so just over a foot. And it, but in another place in the park where that's a bit lower elevation, the lake has, uh, uh, it's, it's a bit bigger, there's more food for it. They got to be about 17 inches. So, and that might not be nearly as big as some of the fish uh, that you find, like, um, uh, is it blue catfish that live in, uh, in Texas? How big do those guys get? Or what are some of the big fish in, in Texas? Uh, Mr. Shaker, yeah. just have to pop the microphone on again. Okay. Okay. It's sounding kind of silent, but um, so we're looking at anywhere, you know, from 14 to 17 inches when they get to be adults in Banff. We're on. We're we, on. we aren't sure exactly how, t how long they get in Texas, but everything's bigger in Texas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Very good question or very good answer. So I can see that our grade ones in Tweed are are back. How are we doing, grade uh, grade ones? We're doing great. So where we had preview, we had um, recess and then lunch and then uh, a bit of technical issue, but we managed to reconnect. So we're here now. Um, That's okay. Um, we had some tech issues too, but. Uh, we're glad to see you guys back. Thanks for having us. Do you guys have a question about uh, the park or endangered species or the fish? I have a question about the park. Okay, come on up to the front, Wes. Me, my dad, and my mom, mm -hmm. and my brother and my sister, were going fishing. We found my mom caught a baby octopus. Where was that? Like in um, the water. Where, but where were you fishing? Um, at the closest park. Um, like at Vanderwater? No, um, here in Tweed. Stoke, Stoke Lake? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, wow. That would be an unusual thing. Well, if you're not okay, so here's a here's an important uh, question for you guys, um, and one of the ways that we can all help um, wherever we are to be good stewards of 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 our wilderness areas, if we if we're fishing and we catch something and we're not sure what kind of fish it is or what kind of species it is, should we keep it or should we put it back? back in the water. Yeah, so it's a good idea. And is it okay? Do you, do you guys think it's okay to put any fish in the water that don't belong there? Yeah. No. If, 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 if we have goldfish, say for instance in our homes, is it okay to put goldfish in the water? No, only the fish that belong in the water should be in the in in the natural space. So that's a really interesting story about that you that you relayed there. Thanks for sharing that. It, looked, it was red and it looked like a baby on. No, oh, that's exciting. Now, are there any other questions, Joe? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to Mrs. Gill's class in Cambridge. Okay. Are there any other invasive species in the park that you're concerned about? Oh, yes. So there are, um, in addition to rainbow trout, um, uh, the park had also introduced brook trout and brown trout. Um, but there are also lots of plant species um, that have been either uh, brought in 
or arrived by accident. So lots of plants like oxeye daisy, um, uh, uh, tall buttercup, you name it. And it's interesting, um, one of the plant species, so one of the ways the, that the, some of the plant species can arrive in the park and remember I said that they can arrive accidentally? Well, um, we noticed that uh, some of the food that we've, or, or people who have horses have fed the horses, have seeds in them. And when the horses travel through the park, when they have, when they, when they eat the food and it passes through their system, and then they have a poo, and it lands on the ground, some of the seeds in that can eventually plant in the ground and, um, and grow. So that's kind of an, in it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. So yeah, thank you. Does that, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay, good stuff. All right, so there's lots of ways to transmit, um, you know, besides actually releasing, you could even get seeds on your, on your boot and bring them somewhere. So lots of different ways that um, Absolutely. species can be introduced. Yeah, in fact, um, one of the one of the ones that we're we're, uh, we're really concerned about right now is uh, the zebra mussel. And um, uh, one of the ways that it can travel is when people are in their boats. And uh, so the, the eggs from the zebra mussel can attach to people's boats. And then what can happen is they can take their boat from an area that has a lake that's uh, infested with zebra mussels. And then they can take that boat to another lake that doesn't have them. And then the eggs that are attached to the boat can be released in the water. So, yeah. So that's one of the things that we're concerned about now. Let's check in with our Calgary class, see if they have another question. All right, Calgary. How long have you been working for Parks Canada? Well, um, I don't know if you can see all of the gray hair I have, <laughs> but I've been with uh, Parks Canada for 25 years, and I've done a lot of different things. <laughs> I see some looks of uh, shock. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky to be working for uh, for this place. Very cool. Well, let's check in with Mrs. Schaefer's class and see if they have one more question for us. What was the question? Man, oh, we've had room. kids moving in and out of the classroom to do recording. Somebody have a question? May I have a question? Oh, oh. somebody. Oh. Uh, what is the difference between um, like one trout and another trout? What What are the differences between the the trouts? You said there were some hybrids. Ah, okay. So there are different, so there are different kinds. Um, so there are a variety of different trouts. Um, okay, how to explain this? It's an excellent question. So, you know, we have grizzly bears and black bears. So they're both bear species, but they're different types of bears. They look different. Um, they can behave differently and they have slightly different habitat requirements. So they live in different places. Um, now it, with trout, uh, West Slope cutthroat trout are called a cutthroat species. And so there's a lot of variation within the, the cutthroat species. Um, and then there are rainbow trout, um, uh, which are also a trout species, um, but they look they look different from uh, cutthroat trout. They spawn or lay their eggs at the same time, um, and so I'm sure I'm not I may not be answering this question. Um, uh, so some so there so with the different trout species, some of them may actually be able to lay eggs at the same time. Some of them may not be able to lay eggs at the same time. Some of them like warmer water. Some of them like colder water. Um, some of them uh, can do well living in 
a bit murkier water, but in in the, in the case of West Slope cutthroat trout, they're very, very specialized for uh, the, the environment that they've evolved or adapted to. So they are, they really exclusively need that cold, clean water. All right, so lots of different barriers that can separate different species from each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll check in one more time in Tweed, Ontario, and see if you guys have a final question for us. Uh, well, I have a lot of enthusiastic people wanting to ask a question, but I myself um, have a concern about the invasive species, the mm. animals, which you oh, touched right. on. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering what um, interventions. Um, we can take in other than keeping our boats in one lake. Like, can we wash the bottoms of our boats to keep those? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, we have a special motto. It's called clean, drain, dry. So you, there's a lot that you can do with your boats um, to make sure that, um, that they're uh, that we've removed um, the zebra mussels uh, from them. Um, there are stations where you can, uh, uh, you know, sometimes in, uh, in places like Ontario, there are places where you can have your boat checked. Um, uh, here, what we're doing in the park, uh, or I, I know in some places, um, we do a lot of education to make people aware that they need to be doing this. Um, Joe, do you have any other ideas? Because we don't actually have zebra mussels yet here, but um, I'm not sure what else uh, they might be able to do in places like Ontario where the zebra mussels exist. Yeah. Um... So as a diver myself, uh, I often dive in the Great Lakes and we see the shipwrecks and all sorts of other uh, areas that are just covered uh, in the wow. zebra mussels, um, unfortunately. So, I mean, really at this stage, they're here. You know, they came across in the in the, the ballast, the water tanks of big ocean uh, ships. So like you said, a lot of it has to do with prevention. So um, having uh, the ships you know, not empty their ballast tanks uh, in, in our waters, which unfortunately can bring a lot of different species. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it uh, right now is kind of more almost maintenance. So trying to remove them from pipes and areas where they're causing troubles. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. really, I don't think we found a really good solution yet, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's really prevention's the biggest thing in, in mm -hmm. a lot of cases is, how can we prevent um, them from coming in the first place? Yeah. So in, a, in the case of zebra mussels, keeping them from coming into areas where they don't currently exist. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for today. I know uh, the tech tried to get us at the beginning, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it just makes things more exciting when you have to publish <laughs> on the fly. So thank you so much for sharing the project with us. Uh, you know, your passion shines through. Um, and it's, it's so awesome to see a project that's successful. So people who, you know, invasive species, uh, we were losing the populations and seeing a conservation project that kind of grabbed the reins and took control and even used helicopters to bring fish from <laughs> lake to lake. So a pretty big scale project. And it's great to see the success starting to pay off. Awesome. Well, thank you for letting me share the story with you guys. All right. Well, classrooms, thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you for the great questions as always. I'm just going to turn the microphones on. And if you guys want to get nice and loud, a big goodbye and thank you. All right. You know, you guys are always so good at that. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. We definitely look forward to more hangouts uh, with Parks Canada with, uh, from Banff National Park. Uh, we're excited to learn more about the amazing, not only the park, but the, the conservation projects and all sorts of yeah. uh, fun things that are happening in the parks. Look forward to sharing that with you in the future. All right. We are going to sign off for today. Thanks a lot, boys and girls. Enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao. Bye.